Jennifer, and today from My Story Animated, I'm going to tell you how I inherited my kidnapper's fortune. Yeah, that's right. Weird, huh? But for that, I have to tell you a few things first, so stick around and subscribe to this channel. So, I was born in a small town, but the quiet life didn't last long. My father was a diplomat, so I spent most of my life traveling around the world. Moving from place to place every couple of months is not as awesome as it may sound. I had no place to call home, no friends, and no close family other than my parents. Since we moved around so much, I never spent more than two months in a school. My parents decided it was best that I did homeschooling. Great. That was a dead end in my social life chances. When I turned 15, my dad passed away. Things could not get any worse. My mom decided that we would move back to the small town I was born in. For the first time in my life, I would go to school for a whole year. But remember how I told you I had no friends and no social life? Well, imagine how anxious I was to think about school. Just to imagine all those kids inside one classroom made me shiver. And to make things worse, I learned in the hardest way possible how dangerous it is to be beautiful. Yeah, I was beautiful, apparently. At least that's what everyone in school thought the moment I stepped in. I've never given much thought about that because I spent my days at home seeing only teachers through a screen. I knew nothing about fashion or trends. The day before school, I thought that everyone would look at me like a weirdo. I was shy and panicked at the idea of talking to anyone. My plan was to stay low, learn my lessons, and rush home. But seemingly, my beauty stood out from the start and I didn't have to start any conversation. Everyone was talking to me at the same time, asking a million questions. I learned the very first day that when you're pretty, everything you say and do is cool. So when I talked about my past, everyone was amazed. Traveling around the world was cool, homeschooling was awesome, and having no friends at all was reason enough for everyone to be eager to change that for me. No matter how many times I explained that my past wasn't as fantastic as it seemed, they just heard what they wanted and asked me more frantic questions. And then the world suddenly stopped, as if someone just pushed the pause button of my life. The hottest guy I've ever seen had just arrived at school. And trust me, when you travel around the world as much as I did, you see a lot of different people. This guy was just plain perfect. I couldn't believe my eyes, and I couldn't believe that he'd lived in a small town like that. His name was Janus, and all I could think of was that, of course, he would be named after a Greek god. He smiled at me, and all I could do was stare at him like an idiot. Was I drooling? I hope not. And then reality punched me in the face. A gorgeous girl appeared from behind and strategically put her hand on Janice's shoulder. Together, they looked like a couple recently descended from Olympus. The girl's name was Martha, a name I would sadly remember forever. Martha was the most popular girl in school, and it suddenly felt obvious that she would be Janice's girlfriend. She was used to things working the way she wanted, and she was not happy with me. I saw in the first look she gave me that she saw me as a threat. She marked her territory quickly, and when Janice introduced me to her, she scanned me from head to toe, and the first words I ever heard coming from her mouth were, So sad you had no time to buy new clothes. Silence took over the entire hall. She glanced at other guys around me with a killer look, and they all spread out. What the hell? Who was this girl? A dictator would be an understatement. For some miraculous reason, Janice showed more interest in me than Martha wanted. At first, I tried to ignore him, but when lunchtime came and he asked me if I wanted to sit with them, I couldn't say no. And by the end of the day, he was already asking me to go to the party he was having that night at his place. How could I resist a Greek god? He was so painfully handsome that my will around him disappeared. Martha was obviously not happy with the idea of me in Janice's home. But to tell you the truth, I liked the idea of being seen and appreciated for the first time in my life. And to be completely honest, I wasn't that much afraid of Martha. If Janice wanted to hang out with me, it was his choice. So to make her swallow those hurtful words she spit out to me at school, I decided to wear one of the most gorgeous and extravagant dresses I owned. You see, as a diplomat, 
My dad used to attend over-the-top events around the world, and many of those times, he would have to take his family with him. So I owned a number of dresses that my mom bought me from different places all over the world. Some of them were even made exclusively for me by renowned designers. I was young and never paid much attention to them, but now the efforts of my sacrificed life would pay off. Step aside, Martha, I'm coming in. I tell you, you should have seen her face when she saw me. Everyone stood silent, but her, oh man, her expression was priceless. Who's the goddess now, Viper? But Martha was not stupid. She was the leader of the school mob and no stupid person in history was ever a leader of anything. She realized immediately that I was not planning to stay low and so she went for another strategy, to befriend me, of course. She smiled widely at me and praised my dress. She even said I looked beautiful in it. I didn't really have a problem with her sudden change in attitude. I preferred her as an ally instead of an enemy. But you know that saying that goes, keep your friends close and your enemies closer? Well, I didn't. And I found out too late that it was exactly what Martha was planning to do. I was the daughter of a diplomat, but I sucked at it. I should have known better. My father died too soon. He had no time to teach me the tools I would need to play Martha's game. So when she grabbed me by the arm and stood by my side the whole time laughing and gossiping about guys in school, I didn't know what she was up to. For the first time in my life, I was actually having fun. From the distance, I saw Janice hanging out with friends. I glanced at him from time to time and I realized he was glancing at me too. Or was I dreaming? After a couple of hours, I told Martha I needed to go to the bathroom. I got inside the house and saw so many sculptures and paintings that I felt I was inside one of the many museums my parents took me to as a kid. Third door on the right, Martha had said. But apparently, I got so carried away by the ominous art that I got lost inside that huge house. I started opening different doors to find the bathroom when suddenly, my jaw dropped. I'd just opened the door to the library. Yeah, I know, what a geek, right? To be amazed by a library. But when you spend your life among diplomats, this is what you learn to cherish. The shelves were packed from floor to ceiling with rare books. Some of them were even first edition classics. I know, you don't give a damn about that, but let me tell you something that will make your jaw drop too. Just a couple of books on any of those shelves would probably be more expensive than the entire house. Yeah, that's right. They look much cooler now, don't they? There were many collectors of rare books in the world, but this many I had only seen in palaces and museums. Who was this family? I was afraid of touching the relics, so I just stared at them in awe. And then Janice got inside and walked slowly towards me. For the first time in my entire night, we were close enough so I could smell his cologne. Dang, it made me dizzy. I was looking for you, he said. My knees were shaking. I was about to faint. I knew it. Get it together, Jennifer. What an amazing collection, I said, changing the subject. What a chicken. Janice got even closer to me. He pulled some hair out of my face and behind my ear. Dance with me, he said. And he didn't give me the chance to refuse like I would have anyway. He put his arm around my waist and we started dancing. The music sounded far away coming from the garden, but it was enough to set the rhythm. I was flying. Then he looked at me and smiled. We were inches apart. He was about to kiss me when I heard Martha's voice. Jen, she shouted. Yeah, I was Jen now. Janice pushed me away gently, but nervously. He blinked a couple of times, then rushed to the door. Before he opened it, he glanced at me once more, seriously. Hello, beautiful, I heard him say from the other side of the door. Was I imagining things, or was his voice trembling? What was going on? Have you seen Jen? I heard. It was Martha's voice. No, I haven't, he lied. I waited a couple of minutes and then got out. I went back out and straight towards Martha's side. Something really weird was happening, and I didn't want to look suspicious. From the corner of my eye, I saw Janice back with his friends. He winked at me, and I smiled back. Dang, he was gorgeous. But was I doing the right thing? I mean, Martha's arm was around mine, and I was flirting with her boyfriend. And what about him? Why was he doing that? And why did he lie to Martha to cover me up? 
Too many questions I had no answer for. When I arrived at school the next day, Martha and Janice were already there, hanging out with the rest of the elite. Martha called my name and they opened a spot for me. The guys were talking about an upcoming football game. Martha had her arm on Janice's shoulder, as always. Janice was an active participant in the conversation, but he glanced at me from time to time. I felt my cheeks getting red. I hoped Martha didn't notice. The bell rang, thank God, and we all started to walk to class. Janice was walking next to me, and I felt his hand caressing mine. I looked at him, but he looked forward. I looked at Martha, and she was distracted talking with another girl. So I touched Janice's hand, too. We continued like that until we reached the classroom, and then he went to sit with his friends. My seat was in the first row next to Martha, so I didn't dare turn around and look at him. The class went on forever. I was glad to realize that I already knew that biology lesson from my homeschooling days because I could not pay attention. Janice was all over my mind. Weeks passed, and since Janice was Martha's boyfriend and Martha was determined to hover over me all day long, we spent a lot of time together. Not just us, but the entire group. We shared classes, break times, lunch, after-school activities. On one hand, it was great to finally experience what a social life meant. On the other, I was going crazy. I couldn't understand Janice. He was obviously interested in me. Why didn't he dump Martha? She wasn't as interested in him as me. She was obviously dating him because he was the most gorgeous guy in school. So one day, I got fed up, and as I was entering school, I decided to face him and ask him what the hell was going on. To my surprise and benefit, Martha got sick and didn't go to school that day. That would make it easier for me to find a moment alone with Janice. After lunch, I told him I had to talk to him and asked him to meet me at the backstage of the school theater. I was already sweating when I saw him walking slowly towards me through the aisle between the chairs. He never took his eyes from me, and as he climbed the stairs, without saying a word, he took my face in his hands and kissed me. Finally! I've been waiting for this moment forever! I couldn't believe it was happening! I didn't tell you this, but I'd never kissed a guy before. Imagine having that first experience with a Greek god. I don't have words to express what it meant, what I felt. Even though everything in my life collapsed after that magic moment, I would live it again over and over. Well, I wouldn't want to ruin this moment for you either, but that's what happened. Martha was not really ill. She was faking it so she could finally catch us red-handed. Martha, as the dictator she was, had spies all over the school. So I'm guessing that when I got inside the theater and Janice entered just minutes after, someone must have texted her. She rushed to school and got inside the theater with a few of Janice's friends. They all stared at us in silence. You're going to pay for this, Martha said with a calmness that made me shiver, as if she'd been waiting for this to happen and had everything planned. And then I heard the most hurtful words of my life. Well done, Janice, she said, smiling now. I looked at him, puzzled. My heart instantly crushed. He looked at her and then at me cold as ice, not the way he'd been looking at me these past weeks. Janice? I asked. But he swallowed in silence and looked at the floor. Let's go, Martha said, and they all followed, Janice included. I was left alone in the theater, and I felt as sad and confused as the day my father died. I felt the tears coming down my cheeks, and I couldn't find the will to move. I wanted to disappear from the world and never come back. The following days were really strange. There was a general calmness in the air that looked very much like the silence before a storm. Martha ignored me, and so did everyone else. And to make things worse, I was becoming the best student in the class. I say worse because that was also a way to bother Martha. I didn't intend to, but before I came, she was the best student. And now, apparently, I had not only tried to steal her boyfriend, but I was competing with her for the best average medal. As the teachers congratulated me after every exam, I could feel her envious stare on my neck. The final exams were closer, so I focused on them. I was used to studying alone and having no friends, so this was not new for me. I asked my mom if I could go back to homeschooling, but she said no. As the finals were approaching, I became more and more scared of Martha. She was relentless when she had something in her mind, and apparently, I was her new project. 
She said I was going to pay for what I did, but she hadn't done anything yet. Yet. I'd underestimated her all along, and now I didn't know how expensive my debt would be. The week of the final exams arrived, and I was glad I would have something on my mind other than Martha. But as I walked to school, I heard a loud noise behind me, and when I turned around, I jumped to the side just in time to avoid a black van from crushing me. The van stopped harshly. The side door opened. Two guys dressed in black with balaclavas covering their faces grabbed me and pushed me inside. Because my dad was a diplomat, kidnapping had always been a possibility in my life. They made me take courses to keep calm and taught me strategies to escape. I even had bodyguards. But when my dad passed away and we moved back to the quiet town, the menaces were over. Or so I thought. I stayed quiet and silent inside the van, thinking about all those past years where I was frightened to leave the house because of a kidnapping possibility. And now, when I finally got the chance to put it behind me, it was happening. I couldn't think of any enemy my dad could have that would make me go through this after all these years. They couldn't hurt him anymore. As they taught me in the courses, I tried to study my kidnappers. They were built, and as the van moved, they looked more and more nervous. Amateurs. That would be an advantage if I tried to escape. We arrived at the warehouse and they grabbed me violently. Why hadn't they covered my face? I could see everything. I wouldn't have to do so much math to understand where I was. They took me inside and tied me to a chair in the middle of a warehouse. Take her phone, one of the men said. Call her mother and ask for a million dollars. As I heard the words, I frowned. We don't have a million dollars, I said. The man got closer to me and yelled, shut up. I closed my eyes, expecting him to hit me, but he just stood there staring at me. Your mother will find a way to pay us, he said. I had a thousand questions. Even though the people at the embassy told me that asking kidnappers questions only made things worse, I wanted to know why they were doing this to me. But I stood silent. They kept me there for an entire week, the longest of my life. There were at least four or five different men that came and went around. Their heads were always covered and they didn't speak much. They never hurt me either. It looked like they were waiting for something, just taking turns to guard me. I was mainly worried about my mom. They'd been calling her and threatening her every day. If you don't want us to hurt your daughter, you better move out of town, they said. I was eager to please their demands. This town was full of psychos. Finally, after I don't know how many more days, I heard police sirens. They sounded like music to my ears. The two guys on watch stood up quickly, and before I could think of anything, they ran away. The last guy, before running away from the other two, stared at me from the distance in silence for a moment. I stared at him too, confused by his attitude. He looked like he was hesitating. I'm sorry, he said, and I realized just then why he'd been the only one of them that never said a word near me. It was Janice. And I realized another thing. Martha was behind all of this. Why would she do this? After a second, the obvious answer came to my mind. The finals. Martha was keeping me away from the exams. How powerful was she that she was able to do all this? I followed Janice with my eyes as I saw him disappear, frustration taking entirely over me. After a moment, I heard my mom's voice calling me. Over here! I shouted. She rushed towards me, untied me, and hugged me, crying. Are you all right? Are you hurt? She asked, but I couldn't speak. Janice's stare on me was all I could think of. The police took us back home. As we passed in front of the school, I remembered Martha and a wave of anger washed over me. I knew she was guilty and all the fear I'd felt since she said I was going to pay for my actions turned into thirst for revenge. If she wanted me to leave town and this was the way to accomplish that, she had no idea who she was dealing with. Kidnapping was a bottom dweller move, but I was raised in fear of it and now that it finally happened, it didn't make me weaker, but stronger. Thank you, Martha. You turned me into an iron woman, and now it's payback time. I wanted to go to school the very next day, but my mom sharply opposed. I needed rest, she said, but I was so eager to face Martha that I felt unstoppable. I couldn't sleep much that night. As I stared at the ceiling in the darkness, I heard noises in my window. I got up and saw Janice on the other side. I wanted to hate him. I wanted to shout at him and punch him in the face. But as I saw his expression filled with guilt, I simply couldn't. 
I let him in and went back to sit on my bed with my arms crossed. I'm sorry, he said again. Why? I asked, annoyed. Why did you do it? Martha's father has my entire family threatened, he confessed. What? I asked. I was shocked. What happened? I don't know, he said. Something about a business going wrong. Her father set up mine. Now I know where Martha gets the jeans from, I said, surprised. She forces me to be her boyfriend. She's been doing it for years, Janice said. How can you stand it? I asked. We will lose everything if Martha's dad talks. But I don't understand, I said. You have more money in your library than the president. What? Janice asked. The books, I shouted. What books? He asked, confused. Ugh. I wanted to punch him in the face again. Why was everyone in this town ignorant? The rare books in your library are worth a fortune. How come your dad doesn't know this? I asked him. Janice took out his cell phone and called his dad. Then he explained that his father tried to sell the books many times, but had no contacts. Oh, don't worry about that, I said. My mom can definitely think of a place or two. But then Janice stayed silent. And when I asked him what happened, he said that if Martha's father found out, he would take the money away from them that they already had to pay him monthly just to keep the secret. What a horrible man, what a horrible family. Well, I didn't know much about friends or social life, but I did know quite a lot about politics and law. So I had a few ideas in my mind. Do you trust me, Janice? I asked, looking deep into his eyes. He took my face in his hands and kissed me like he did in the theater. I not only trust you, I love you, he said, and kissed me again. Well, that was enough for me to turn the world upside down for him, but that was not the main reason for my plan. Martha had inherited the genes for dictatorship. I had inherited the ones for justice. I told Janice that my plan was to sell all the books and put the money under the name of a fake company and then use that money to bring down Martha's dad. My mother had many contacts at the embassy and around the world. This was going to be a piece of cake. He said that the plan was perfect except for one detail. He wanted the money to be in my name. Wait a minute, what? You were an angel in my life, and I treated you like hell, he said. This is the least I could do to prove to you my trust and love. And he kissed me again. Ha, who's gonna pay now, Viper? You want me to leave town? Well, you're gonna wish I were dead. Do you wanna hear the rest of the story? Subscribe to this channel to watch how we brought Martha and her father down in the most diplomatic way ever.